M0FXB, welcome back to the channel. Yeah, I've had a couple of questions today that I found that I think are interesting and, and good questions with, uh, with hopefully, um, you know, I can give an answer with, that will help. I'm not saying, because I, like, I don't feel like I'm an expert. I just feel like I've used many devices for many years and I've crossed similar bridges. So the first one was I've got a hotspot and I've turned on my Yesu radio. If you don't know what a hotspot is, it's a, a, raspberry, a mini Raspberry Pi computer that is connected to, has, has a hat connected to the top of it, which inside that hat, there is um, what they call an MMDVM board. So it allows D-Star, DMR, P25, um, C4FM Fusion to pass through it. And the way you connect to it is is actually via RF. So you're sort of linking to the device using your radio to send commands. And then in turn, that device is connected to the internet. And then because it's connected to the internet, it can connect to talk groups, uh, C4FM rooms, D-Star reflectors, ETC, uh, which are running on a computer server somewhere in the world. Um, so it's still all... It still needs the server. It's not going to work without it. Although you can use D-Star radios, basically digital radios, person to person. And then there is no computer apart from the, I suppose, the mini processor inside the, your actual radio. So what the station said to me was, oh, it's not working. Um, I've heard that these hotspots that you buy from China are no good. Um, do you think it's that? And I, I actually hear that very often very often i people say that the mmdvm hats that you can buy on aliexpress amazon ebay are no good but it's 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 not true i have been using these hats since they came out they don't cost much 25 pound and they were less back then um, and i still got the same ones and they they completely work now they're firmware upgradable um and they they just they just work well. They, I've never s seen one that was faulty. I've seen one that was used wrongly and became faulty. Or and then obviously the configuration of an MMDVM MMD, MMD, MMD hotspot, the Pi Star system, is a big learning curve. If you've never done it, if you've done it a thousand times, it's nothing. But if you've never done it, it's a real learning curve. So with hotspots, the main thing that you need to get is a, a Wi-Fi or network search program like Advanced IP Scanner. Put that into, into Google, Advanced IP Scanner. Another easy one to remember is Angry IP. And that searches your network. It doesn't matter whether it's connected via an Ethernet cable or via your Wi-Fi. As long as the phone or the computer that is running the search program is on the same network. Most of us only have one network at home, although I have two. Um, uh, it's going to find everything linked, and one of them will be called PiStar. So that's the first thing to do is to search that and just make sure it's even on the system. Because every time you reboot these devices, it changes their IP address. Now, you think, well, what's an IP address? Well, it's actually a, a really good question. And the way I describe IP address is like this. Imagine a string in your house that runs in a big loop, a big circle, and everyone that's using their phone, their computer, even your smart TV, your radios that, that are internet linked, um, any gadget, it could be a PlayStation, Xbox, they're all going to be connected to that string and each one's going to have a number. Yeah, so we remember the numbers like 192.168.1 or dot zero, and then at the end of that, say another number, okay? And so, for the system to work, every separate, every item on that network has to have its own number, because that's the way that the system, and I definitely, I'm not an expert on the system, is going to find each different device. So when you reboot the device. The system will automatically try and assign a number that is similar to all your other numbers. 
okay and that's basically what your IP address now when it's the IP address of your home this is the bit that gets confusing you've got the IP address of the gadgets that are inside your house it's called your local IP address but then you've got your internet IP address which is where you are in the world so that will be your actual broadband router that will have an IP address and if it's put down as a what they call a dynamic IP address then it will change every time you turn it on and off but most of us do not change or turn off our broadband routers unless there's a problem you know we reboot it so this is why the first thing you do when you've got a hotspot problem is search to see if it's even talking and connected and if there's nothing in the list then you have to start you know going in connecting directly to the device the quickest way is to plug in an ethernet cable now don't forget some of these small hotspots don't have ethernet cables <laughs> Um, so you have to, you can buy a little adapter, micro USB to Ethernet, and then connect that way, or you've got to dig out, take the SD card out of the device, and use this thing called White Pi Star Builder, and you sort of put on your Wi-Fi username and password using that, and just Google Pi Star Builder, and you'll see that because once you're communicating, then you can just go in, and it's a lot easier then. You put in your call sign, your DMR number, the frequency of the hotspot has to match the frequency of the radio. Otherwise the hotspot can't communicate because it's sending data back and forth between the hotspot and the radio uh, to tell it commands, that to tell it what to do when it connects to the internet. So there you are, that's my little tutorial on, um, on hotspots. Bye for now.